everyone. Oh, we have a big jump of the attendees that joined exactly on time, so I'm glad. Uh, welcome. Um, for those of you that have been with us in our past webinars, um, you see um, Kathy is with us from the photo managers. Um, and today we're hosting Darla, who will teach us about creative ways uh, to use our photos. Um, I'm very excited about it. I, I'll be honest, I got a sneak peek um, and it's super interesting um, and will be very exciting. So I'm excited to have you guys all here. Um, and for those of you who are new to our webinar series, um, we are trying to help our users um, not only scan their photos, but also learn about this whole world of um, what's valuable about your photos, what you can do with them. Um, and we're honored to have uh, Kathy help us connect to um, to you know, all of her knowledge and also to um, various photo manager experts around the world who can share different parts of what they do. Um, so Darla is um, an expert at uh, decorating and using photos for things like that. Um, and we're really excited to see what she has to say. Um, so one more time I'm gonna say, please feel free to ask questions. Um, if you're on Facebook, write them in the comments. Um, and if you're in Zoom, write them in the chat um, and make sure that you send to panelists and attendees. Um, I'll try to answer questions as I can throughout the presentation if I know the answers. Um, and at the end, we'll have live Q&A with Kathy and Darla and myself, and we'll be able to answer the various questions that you guys might have. Um, and with that, Kathy. Okay, great. And I'll step off in a minute too, but I'm excited. Welcome everybody as well. This is, I think, our third or fourth webinar now that we've been doing with uh, PhotoMind, which has been wonderful. I'm thrilled to bring you Darla. When uh, Ariel asked for other suggestions of topics, I knew right away that Darla would be a great speaker. She speaks at our conferences often. One of her, this a version of this talk was uh, ways to display your photos creatively was one of our top rated uh, presentations at our annual conference that we do and I knew she'd bring you great information so I will introduce uh, Darla is also an author of four books and uh, upbeat organizing how to organize your home office so she does many things besides just uh, displaying helping you display your photos right Darla and so yeah, again I'll yeah. step away I'll be here also answering questions in the chat and we'll come back at the end of Darla's presentation so enjoy and Darla say stay safe there in the hurricane <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. So, hang on one sec. Okay, great. So, this is me, and uh, I'm, not, I'm never sure what you can see on Zoom while we're doing this. So you may be able to see the back of my office here, um, but uh, this is me, and these are my books. This is, uh, I run a business in just outside of Philadelphia called Heartwork Organizing. I've been in business for 15 years, over 15 years as an entrepreneur. Before that, I was in high tech and project management. Um, but in the last 15 years, I've been busy um, building a business, starting as a professional organizer, uh, built in, what would happen is we would get clients who would say, great, now I'm organized, I can finally see the carpet, I can see the the walls and I'm thinking about changing the colors. What do you think? So um, I had loved doing that for myself and my neighbors had built in uh, I basically went back to school and got certification as a decorator as well and then I became a photo manager uh, about six years ago. That's actually the fastest growing part of our business right now and as Kathy mentioned I do have four books. The latest believe it or not was just published in January of 2020 which seems like a million years ago and it's called the Upbeat Organized Home Office. Who knew that at this point in the year, not only people in America, but all over the world, as we have folks um, on this call represented, are now working from home. In fact, the stat that I saw most recently was 60% of Americans who are working in any industry have worked from home now um, over the last 90 days, which is a definite, definite shift. So I was grateful to be able to bring this this book out about getting your home office uh, made up beautifully and organized so that you can be productive at home. Um, I also am, a, as I mentioned, a certified professional organizer through the international organization called NAPO. And I also am a RISA home stager, uh, that stands for the Real Estate Staging Association. And um, as part of that, uh, I also decorate. So 
all of my loves have come together where I get to help people get organized, make their space beautiful, um, and also organize their digital files. And part of that is photos. So that's how all of those threads come together. And then today, I was asked to share with you the secrets of hanging photo galleries. So we're going to do three things today. We're going to help you get your photos out of your phone or off your computer and into your home. You're going to learn some decorating guidelines for professional results. And most of all, I want to inspire confidence because I know it's scary to start pounding holes in your walls, but whether you are inspired by a very simple gallery like this, where it's just a, a three by two uh, gallery of retail frames and very simple um, non-professional pictures, like I'm showing you here. This, By the way, these photos that I'm showing you are all my clients. These are all real pictures and uh, they are galleries that I have hung. Um, so you might be really inspired by this picture and say, ah, oh, yes, that's exactly what I want. I want to take my home and just amp it up just a little bit with my pictures and the things, surround myself with things that I love. Or you might be inspired by something a little bit more eclectic. Again, another client of mine, this is her home office, and we took this room from a very bland white on white uh, kind of room. And we hung at this very eclectic, very um, uh, personalized photo gallery and art gallery on her wall. And then we augmented it with lots of her favorite things around the room, including a customized mural that you see on the closet door. So that big um, picture on the right is, a, is actually a professional picture um, taken by a photographer. Um, but my, my client and I turned that into a mural and then hung it on the four panels of her accordion closet door. So this may be more your style. It's very, very colorful, a lot going on in it. I'm going to come back to this picture a couple of times in the presentation and show you some, some things that you can do. So whether you, again, are looking for something simple or something a lot more complex or something in between, uh, we're, we're going to start by having you gather your treasures together. And um, that's always the first step. Uh, you're going to gather your previously framed pictures. You're going to gather prints from your phone or your computer. And that may be a challenge for you. I'm, I'm going to trust that that topic is going to be covered in some other presentations or that you can get that information off the web. I'm not going to go too much into how you get prints off your phone, but just know that that's possible. And if you've never done it before, it's pretty straightforward. You can either get help from one of the, um, the, the professionals in the photo managers, which is the group that I mentioned earlier. I'm a certified photo manager in this group. That's the group that Kathy leads. Um, or you can get help in a uh, retail environment in your local area. Uh, if you go into any photo store, any camera store uh, where I live, any uh, retail store like a CVS, a Walgreens, you'll get help turning your photos into physical photos that you can hang on your wall. Um, you might also have scanned vintage pictures. So we do encourage you to scan your older pictures into digital formats. And there's a whole bunch of reasons you can do that. But one is that if you reprint those photos, chances are you can actually get better quality with today's prints than the original. And uh, then they can, they can hang on your wall, they can inspire your family to think about your, your broader family, maybe the ones that aren't living with you or, or near you right now. A lot of people are trying to connect with their family because they can't see them like they would normally do uh, traveling on vacations and things like that. Um, and then also I want to inspire you, gather together your treasures and pair your non-photo keepsakes along with the photos that you've actually taken. And, and you'll see a lot of that throughout the presentation here. So um, an example of this, I want to give you a very concrete example. So you're going to see a lot of before and after pictures. This is a before and after. We started with a photo on the left that is, uh, you can see it's very faded. It's a, I'm going to say that's a maybe 10 by 12, 10, 10 by something. It's about a 12 inch photo. And um, when I came across it, it was badly framed. It's really like a very 
not attractive frame at all. It's badly, badly faded. Um, it's a very small picture relative to the, the wall that we had to uh, hang it on, so we wanted to increase the size. And on the right, you can see the photo after it was scanned, after it was color corrected, after it was framed. And this looks like a very expensive frame, and I'll tell you it's not. It's a retail frame. We probably paid less than $50 for it. Um, and on the left, you can see it was matted originally. It's, it's a weird matting. I won't go into that. But when we, when we corrected everything on the picture and made it larger, we actually decided it didn't need a matting. It was really uh, something that could stand on its own. So uh, if you have photos in your collection that are not in great condition, just know that they can be so much better. So I hope that you know, this picture makes you smile because it's one of my favorite projects that we've done in the last couple of years. But there's a lot of things that you can pair together, as I mentioned, pairing your non-photo things with your photos. On the left, you'll see a, um, a professionally framed item. And the frame itself is pretty cool because there's actually no corners on this frame. There's no, there's no um, uh, miters and there's no cuts on the frame. It's a really cool frame if you take a minute to look at it. But what's inside, is a family picture, a vintage family picture, paired with a military medal. And that can be very powerful and uh, interesting in your home. On the right, you can see one of my clients who caddied for Jack, I always get this wrong, Jack Nicholas, um, the famous golfer. And we actually framed the glove that Jack Nicholas used in that particular uh, tournament that he was in. And then we in included some other artifacts. There's a um, a cutout of the logo of the, the of where the event was and we've got it double and triple matted in a couple of places. It's really, it took a long time for us to put together this photo and the artifact together, but you can see when you invest in that, this family's going to have that for a long time. That'll be something that they enjoy passing down. Okay, so hopefully I've inspired you already to turn some of your things that maybe you've got in boxes or in storage into things that you want to bring in your house. Um, and I always laugh when I give these presentations. I have to tell you that I'm a decorator and a photo organizer. I'm not a photographer. So yeah, I know this is out of focus. Um, but I wanted to give you a visual of the tools that you're going to need to hang things on your walls because we're going to get really tactical here. So these are some of the tools that I use. Um, obviously a small step ladder, a hammer, a level. There's a couple of levels there. There's some specific hardware, a stud finder, and sliders because you're often going to have to move heavy furniture out of the way to get to the walls. But I want to show you the game changers, okay? And these are three tools that I love and I use and you might not know about them. So number one on the left, it's a hardware called Ux. Now, I don't know if these are available, if these three things are available internationally. So my international folks will have to chat and see if, you know, you can find these on your online sources or your local sources. You have to let us know in the chat box. Um, but I know that here in the U.S. you can purchase Ooks online and at Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, so they are pretty widely available. It's not a misprint. It's O-O-K-S. That's the brand name. And the brilliant thing about these is that they work wonderfully for plaster walls. So if you've ever had to hang anything on plaster walls and you think, oh, I'm not doing that again, um, because it, they crumble so easily, this will fix that problem. They look like regular nails, but they're not. They're anodized steel. Yeah, anodized steel. So, um, and they can hold uh, whatever poundage, you know, whatever rating um, is on the individual hooks. So they go all the way from five pounds up to, I don't know, 50 pounds, maybe 100 pounds, uh, depending on the hardware that you purchase. So they are brilliant, they are my favorite, and I use them for every type of wall, not just plaster walls. Um, so drywall, and they have some specific hardware also, looks a little different, but they have some specific hardware for cement walls and, and bricks as well. The second one that I love is called the Hang and Level. It's from a uh, company called, I think, Under the Roof Decorating, or UTR. And uh, it allows you to perfectly position uh, items with just your two hands without having to usually use a second person to hold things and then you kind of guess you know okay with the wires right about there and the the hole kind of goes about there this actually gets rid of all that um, ambiguity 
and it allows you to hang the item on a wall using one hand and to find the position for the nail with the second hand. It's brilliant, it's really a time saver. And there's a third item, if you do get into hanging a lot of wall, uh, ga galleries and you need to position items relative to each other, there's a, there's a tool by the company called Let's, Let's Hang, and it's called the Ultimate Hanging Tool, and you can see a picture of it on the right. So those three are game changers. All right, so how to place a gallery? Well, I will tell you that I like to do them freestyle. So what I do is, and I'm gonna show you pictures of these, but I'm gonna give you the steps first, and then I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so first of all, lay all your items on the floor in front of the wall where you wanna be hanging them. This may require you to move some furniture. You wanna measure both the width and the height of the area that you have available on the wall. Okay, so I'm not talking about a standard eight foot ceiling, I'm saying, where does your couch end? Start there and go up to the available space that you have on your ceiling or uh, near your ceiling, and that's your height. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Consider where the furniture is going to be, but then move it out of place so that you can operate safely. You know, there's a lot of articles out there that will say, roll out some butcher paper, tape it to your wall, figure out where things go. I will tell you that I skip that step every time. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't actually transfer very well from the floor to the wall. But what I do recommend is that uh, what you can outline is your frame. And I don't mean the frame of the picture, I mean the frame of all the pictures. And frame that out in painter's tape as needed. And I have a visual in a second. And then start with your center item. So if you are hanging multiple pieces, I want you to start with your center item and then flow out to the left and the right from there. Reason is if you start on one corner, um, you'll find that there's just a little variation as you move across the wall and your, your spacing is gonna end up being weird. But if you start in the center and you flow out, you are more likely to get an actual center and uh, symmetrical spacing on each side of the most important item. And then the other thing, um, my peers really like this tip, so I'll share this with you too. Um, I almost never actually measure completely when I'm hanging a gallery, but what I do use is palm spacing for my hand to separate, and hopefully you can see I'm holding this up in front of me. I use actually my hand as a spacer to separate large items in a gallery. And if there are smaller items in the gallery, I use two or three fingers to space those um, one from the other. And so you can see this kind of gallery that I'm talking about here. Uh, on the right, we have a small gallery of just six items, but I didn't you know, use a measuring tape and say, oh, that's two and a half items, and, or two and a half inches, or you know, whatever centimeters. Um, I didn't measure it out, and you can see why, because I have some frames with odd edges. And it's going to be really hard in that kind of situation if you have uneven frames to use that kind of precise measuring. But as one of my peers pointed out, you know, you always have your hands, you always have your fingers, they're always going to be the same size. So consistency actually is more important than getting it exactly right. Because I'll tell you, the eye can't really tell the difference between two inches and two and a quarter inches from across the room. So uh, it's not as important that you get things centered and perfectly measured. Now I wanna show you kind of a huge gallery from start to finish. Uh, this is a client of mine who loves pictures. This is how I found her. You know, She was stacking a bunch of pictures on these picture ledges, which once you get more than three or four photos, you start to lose their impact and they just look skimpy on a wall. And she hired me and said, this is my gift to myself. I'd really, really love to display as many photos of my family as I can. So we started by moving the couch out. The reason that looks blank underneath there is that's where the couch sat. So I started by moving that out so that I had room to work on this wall. And the wall's about, I'm gonna say about 10 feet wide. But what I knew is, if you look at this picture, that I really only had the space from above the couch to the ceiling. So I measured that, I don't know, it's been a while since I did that, but I'm gonna say it's about four feet that I had, you know, three, three and a half, four feet that I had to work with. So I marked the blue tape, blue painter's tape on the wall. I pretended that the back corner is gonna be the ceiling and I marked down about three and a half feet 
so that I knew what my frame was that I was working with. And I knew I could go from the left wall to the right wall, but I needed to stay within this frame that I marked on the, on the floor. And then you see in the middle of this picture, there's a, uh, it's actually a bulletin board and it's got printed on it, loved. And so it's not actually a photo that I started with. I, photo, I started with, some, uh, with a, an interesting piece in the middle. And then on the floor, I laid out all my different photos and all my different artifacts. And I created what appeared to be a pleasing arrangement on the floor first. And you can also see that there are some things that are not pictures, not frames in there. I've got two plates. They're plastic plates on the left-hand side. I, on the right-hand side of the center, I have actually ice cream bowls. And you can't see in there, but my client uh, has fond memories of using these with her kids and her family. And what they say, there's four of them, and one says, I scream, one says, you scream, one says, we all scream, and the other one says, for ice cream. So, uh, so those were a little bit tricky. I actually have them hung and secured on the wall with two different systems because if one of the, the hanging systems failed, I didn't want that, uh, that ceramic bowl to end up on the floor. So I actually double hung them and uh, if and when the, the, the glue or the nail were to fail, there's a second system holding that up. So you can see there's a lot going on here. This is kind of my favorite kind of uh, gallery to hang because I can intermix a whole bunch of frames and styles. And up on the right-hand side, you can see there's a, an unframed canvas, which she switches out every year. She buys the same size canvas, but she has a current uh, version of she and her family every year. So this is the finished version then. And, um, you know, again, this may not be your style. You may like something a little bit more um, confined or um, symmetrical looking. You may want exactly the same frames, but really over time, family walls will be dynamic like this. They're going to have different sizes, different frames. And so this really says to me, you know, family uh, that's been in the house, it actually looks to me like something that is uh, going to be cherished and, and memorized by the small children that live here, quite honestly. All right, so if you like something that's a little bit less eclectic and more polished looking, you do have the option of doing a kit. Now you can do this simply by going to your local art store and buying all the same frames that harkens back to the, the first picture that I showed you. Buy all white frames or all black frames or whatever is your style. Um, and there, and voila, you have a kit. You also have uh, online vendors like Mpix. And actually my favorite is Lil Da Vinci Dynamic Frames. You can find them um, both by going to dynamicframes.com and by going to your favorite online stores. Um, they're a little bit different because they are frames that are on a hinge and allow you to put up to 50 photos in a single frame, but they are made to hang in a gallery style. Uh, so they've got a hidden feature inside and I really love them. They are in fact my favorite. So keep in mind, uh, we're talking about your photos, but I love incorporating more than just pictures in your galleries. I wanted to show you this picture again. It's really eclectic, but it includes professional photography, some prints. Um, right in the middle, there's a collection of, of spoons <laughs> that we hung on a simple uh, table runner. And down on the left-hand corner, you can see a, it's again, a standard frame. I don't usually get really fancy for, for these kinds of uh, engagements, but what we have there is a standard frame and we overlaid a bunch of uh, crocheted doilies that come from the family. You know, somebody in this client's family actually made these and she had no place to display them. She didn't want to put them out as doilies on tables. She wanted to display them. So we put them into a frame and hung them in this very eclectic way. Um, and there's also a TV hidden in here. It may not be the first thing that you notice, um, which is exactly what we were going for. We don't like necessarily to see big black boxes on walls, but you can incorporate them with a gallery. So all sorts of things. I've hung uh, baseball bats, I've hung quilts and clocks and just all sorts of things. 
this back to that wall I showed you earlier, this is one of my favorite stories. You can see there's a bunch of photography in here, but also top left hand corner, you can see a fan. And just very briefly, if you look on each of the spines of those fan of that fan, I'll tell you the story behind this. The client's grandfather received that from the client's grandmother when they were courting. Uh, so when they were dating, you know, when they were these this new couple was dating decades ago, the grandmother, who was a young lady at the time, wrote a little love note on each spine of that fan and uh, gave it to her husband. I may have that in reverse. He may have written the love note and gave it to her. But, uh, but that is a really great example of something that we can hang in a gallery. So I'd love for you to consider, you know, what you have in your personal collection that's unique to you and figure out how to get it out of the box and into your life. Okay, so a few more items that you want to know so you can get professional results. One is, uh, there is no eye level. <laughs> You've heard that before, hang things at eye level. Well, I'm 5'9", but if you're five foot or your husband is 6'5", you're gonna have a hard time deciding what eye level is. So here are the numbers you need to know. In a room where people are sitting, so that would be a living room or a kitchen, any place there's furniture, the center of the art is generally going to be hung at 54, degree, 54 inches from the floor. So the center of the art is 54 inches from the floor. Now, when we're talking galleries, I'll show you one of these in a second. It's the 54 inches is the center of the gallery, not of any single piece. Now, in a hallway, that, that will change slightly. Typically, where people are standing, again, a hallway, maybe a kitchen where it's a stand-up space, not a sitting space, the center of your art is going to be 60 inches from the floor. And that generally looks right to people. Um, if they've been hanging it too high or too low for a while, they may actually tell me, oh, that feels a little weird. I ask people to live with this correct placement for about 30 days, and they eventually come around to thinking, oh, right, this is the right place for this. So I wanted to show you what that means for a gallery. And this is, you know, six pieces of art that we hung. Again, they were all acquired by this family at different times, but they all have a... Um, Sort of a similar quality to them. You know, we pick these pieces because both in frame, in size, and in content, along with color, they all look a little bit, you know, they look harmonious. They don't look the same. Clearly, they weren't purchased at the same time, but they're hung in between two French doors, and the center of that arrangement, which is actually in between, um, kind of in between the, the middle two pieces on the bottom and the top piece, uh, the middle piece on the top. Kind of that, that center uh, is about 54 inches from the floor. All right, and the other thing is, the, the reason I wanted to include this one is you want them hung, even, even if you have to adjust your, um, your placement just a little bit, you want things to be hung so that the, the lighting doesn't interfere with the pieces that you're looking at. So you can see we have a light here, but it's just kind of on the corners. It's not in the middle of the, the content. It's not in the middle of any of the pictures. And it also feels like it relates to the table and the artifacts, the accessories that are on that table. So that's how you get a, a harmonious look. Um, I'll show you in the, the next set of pictures. Uh, also, my next tip, which is place, if you're decorating from scratch or you're, you're starting on a wall, you wanna place your lamps and your lighting before you actually hang your art. The reason is you don't wanna hang your art and then realize, oh, I need a lamp here. It's a little dark in this corner and the only place you have to place that lamp is in front of the art that you just lovingly placed. So lamps first, art second. You wanna place all the art in the room before you hang any. And what I do is I usually just sort of place them around on the floor. I kind of prop them on this wall and that wall and say, yeah, that, that kind of is the right wall for this. And make sure that you've got everything placed in the room before you actually start pounding any holes. You, uh, if you do have people in the gallery and you're using you know, maybe photos that you've taken, be be careful to face your people towards each other. You generally don't wanna face them out from each other. It just kind of looks weird. It looks like they're giving each other the cold shoulder. 
And there are two other decorating rules you probably have heard from heard of before, especially if you're a photographer. There's called a there's something called the rule of thirds, and that is where you fill up either one third or two thirds of the space. You don't want to necessarily think that oh you know I have to only have one thing on this wall or I have to fill up exactly half the space. Things look best when they are filling up either one third or two thirds of the space. And then there's also the rule of threes. Sounds similar, but it's different. And that says that the eye generally likes things that are grouped in odd numbers. So three, five, and seven are all great groupings to start with. So I'll show you what the uh, rule of thirds looks like here and also an example of where you're going to put your lighting first before you put your, your art. Uh, we were decorating this room and we realized that over by the piano, even with the lighting that's over the music, we had a dark corner. So we decided to bring in a floor lamp and then build the art around it. So this is the before and this is the after. And you could see, had I not done that, I very well might have put another uh, piece of art under that birdie picture right in the middle. But then I would have realized, oh shoot, I, I do have a dark corner and I need to bring some more light in. And that would have been, it would have been tragic for our gallery wall here. Um, and this is also an example of filling up about two thirds of the space. Now I'm not gonna measure, I'm not gonna do some math to make sure I've got two thirds filled here. But you can see that roughly we've got two thirds um, covered with the artwork and I have a, actually a needle point, needle point bell pull hung on the left hand side. So this is an example of a gallery with some artwork, with some photographs and also some artifacts that are not photographic. All right, so winding down here, I do wanna bring up staircases because it's gonna be really tricky. Um, if you are hanging anything on a staircase, I'd like to start by drawing a chalk line, literally chalk, six to 10 inches north of the handrail. So um, it's, it's really tricky when you're hanging things to figure out exactly the angle of the stairs and the ha handrail, but you can use that at the bottom and the top, you, you draw a little line and then you draw uh, a line connecting those so that you kind of have a guide to actually hang your artwork. Now, if you only have one piece, you want to hang it at the bottom or at the top of your staircase. The reason is nobody ever stands in the middle of a staircase to admire a piece of art. But you may very well be standing in a landing and that's when your art is appreciated. So that's what this looks like if I just have one piece. But if I have multiples, I'm going to hang them in the middle all the way up the, um, all the, way up the stair rail. But in order to make sure that I do really truly have good placement, I'm going to measure the nail hole or the bottom of each, the bottom middle of each um, item from the step platform. So if I know that it's gotta be 50 or 54 inches from the step platform, you wanna do that uh, from each step platform where the art is hanging right above. And this is what that looks like. Alrighty, so we, we are wrapping up here and I just wanna leave you with a question. You know, where are your treasures? This is a, it's actually only half of a closet of a client who has hundreds and hundreds and possibly thousands of unframed and framed photographs. And this is a client who's recently moved, but you can see all these little photo boxes on the top and then all these blue tubs and the gray one too, are all filled with framed art. And this is a double shame for two reasons. As an organizer, it makes me sad because I could be using that closet space in a much, much better way. But also frames take up a huge amount of space in your storage. And wouldn't it be better to see them, to see your framed family, friends, and places that you visited, wouldn't it be better to see those on the wall than to store them away? So I hope that I'm inspiring you to get out your photos. Uh, this is a business, by the way, if you run a business, this is one of my favorite stories. We have over 70 pieces of art represented here and all the way on the far left corner, um, we have the very first item from this business history over a hundred years ago. This business is a hundred years old. 
and we track that business history from left to right and um, and hung this beautiful gallery. And yes, we actually did start in the middle. If you can kind of visually pick out what the most interesting frame right in the middle is, it's a four piece retrospective history that was written on this business. And it's, um, it's framed in this sort of rectangle uh, frame right in the middle in between the those two windows. So you know, how interesting is this to have your history on display and how tragic would it be to have all of these items packed away in boxes? So as a review, I really hope that I've inspired you today to get your photos out of your phone and get them off your computer and get them out of your boxes and hang them, enjoy them, let your kids learn about your family history um, and really just put these photos and all of your non-photo items into your home. I hope that with the tips I've given you, you can enjoy professional results. And by the way, you may be inspired to do this yourself, so DIY is an option, but you don't have to. Myself, people like me, some of my photo organizing colleagues, and definitely a lot of my decorating colleagues will gladly come to your house and, um, and hire, you can hire in help to get professional results like you've seen today. And yes, I am still um, hanging galleries like this during the pandemic. I actually just did one last week um, because it's not something I have to, to do standing with my client. You know, it is something that we figured out how to do safely. And that's really super important to me. So most of all, I hope I've inspired you to be bold and have fun and enjoy your beautiful things. Now, as I leave you, I want to share with you just a couple of resources that my company is offering specifically. One is, as Kathy mentioned at the start of this, my most recent book is called The Upbeat Organized Home Office. It's available worldwide, no matter where you buy books. Um, if you don't see it on the shelf, you can order it. Trust me, I've got people ordering it from Japan and all over the place. Um, and I also have an online class especially if you want to get your kids art up on the wall or preserved out from under their bed you can uh, go to my website and I have a DIY class that's all online that teaches you how to preserve your kids art which might be part of your home gallery and then um, I also invite you to subscribe to my articles we publish articles one to twice a week and you can do that at heartworkorg.com. And I decided because I love this group so much, I wanted to uh, add one more um, offer. And that is if you do book any appointment with me, uh, any paid appointment with me, and we do have appointments starting at $125 and virtual, and I will work with you wherever you are in the world. If you do book an appointment with me, I'm happy to, uh, if you're in the US, I will ship you a set of the trilogy. I will ship you all three organizing books. And uh, that's just as a thank you for uh, joining this or listening to this uh, call today. So those are all the goodies I have for you. I'll leave this up on the screen for you for a minute. And Ariel, um, if you wanna come back on and let me know if there are any questions that I can answer, I'd be happy to do so. Yes, first of all, thank you so much. That was amazing. Um, I'll be honest, I was very focused on what you were saying and also thinking of the walls in my apartment that need some decorating. <laughs> so it was Good. excellent. 